Good evening. Hello, everybody. And welcome to Bitches, Bitches in, in the, the Buckle. Buckle. I am your host, drinking beer tonight, Judith Limley, a.k.a. Dragon. And I am your host, drinking water that doesn't have dirt, sand, and chemicals in it, Stephen. A.k.a. <laughs> Stephen. A.k.a. Elliot Lotus Smith. Twist. Lotus Twist, yes. Sounds like a lemon drink. Yes. I want a Lotus Twist. <laughs> My fairy name is Elliot Lotus Twist. I love it. It's a fairy name. Crunchy. <laughs> and can we have... Hot sauce! <laughs> Just like ribs! Anyway, I hope you guys have your barbecue so, uh, barbecue on, and if not barbecue, get your turkey on, because I know it's about that time. It is about that time, but we, are, we probably should tell people where we've been the last, for the last two weeks. Yeah, for the uh, last two weeks. And for the two of us, we do apologize for not tuning in. It's uh, been a couple weeks of, I have been sick, and then, snow. We had snow, yes, and I... Even though I was born and raised in Omaha, Nebraska, um, I have since, I, I, I have a summertime truck, which means that it rides during the summer and uh, it rides during the late spring, summer and fall. And even though it, we're in the fall time now, um, when it snows out, my truck is like, okay, I'm sick of forking me, I'm done. And not just that, but the roads were pretty treacherous last and Monday. And two words, Oklahoma drivers. Exactly. Being raised in Minnesota, I put out a notice, drive like a Minnesotan. Give yourself plenty of time to get there. What do Oklahomans do? Leave five minutes to go. <laughs> and they get stuck in a snowbank. Right. What can we learn? Drive like the north. Right. Live in the south. Right. But at the, but and, and to be fair, again, the roads last we're week. Terrible. Yeah, th they were kind of hairy out there, and so um, we we certainly apologize for not bringing you bibs uh, last week. And of course, um, my partner in crime, Dragon, being sick the week before. You know, I you, wasn't going to give it to anybody else. It was all mine for the taking. Um, did you want to discuss that any further than that? or Not particularly. My health is uh, health in there. And quickly, it just was misery loves company, and I didn't want to provide any company. So. Right. And so for those of you who have been wondering where Bibbs has been for the last two weeks, we um, we, we apologize uh, for leaving you hanging for the last two weeks. Um, but we're back on schedule. We're back on track. And hanging. We had a whole full meal tonight, I'll tell you. I don't know about you, but I'm stopped for the now. Yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely had our bibs on earlier, and we've got our mm -hmm. bibs on right now. Yeah. So. Coming to you from Oklahoma anyway. Well, we have a show for you tonight. We're just kind of going to kick it back a little bit since, uh, you know, with the holidays coming up. And right. I, um, one of the things that is my responsibility is um, finding um, news stories um, that are pagan interest um, type of news stories. And I just did not get around to doing that this week. Um, but... Um, and, and, and so we don't have that to discuss uh, this week, um, but we do, um, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving and having a pagan Thanksgiving and um, we're also, uh, but before we get to that, um, there is something that I want to read to everybody um, and let me get my phone. Uh, hang on just a sec. So did anybody else sing any Christmas carols over the week? No. Oh, wait. No. Nah, touchy subject. I got threatened by singing Let It Snow several times. Well, because I wanted the school to close, of course. Right. And, you know, the problem with the wonderful thing about UCO is that they'll never close, even if there's five feet of snow there. They tell us, commuters, learn how to commute, damn it. Right. We're not going to be like the Sooners or the Cowboys because, you know, those Sooners and Cowboys don't know how to drive in the snow. So you got to learn. Right. 
Um, did did um, Norman closed? Okay, so did um, OCU close or UCO close? UCO did not close. We started at 10, 10 o'clock versus uh, uh, having the whole day closed, hmm. which a lot of people were really, really mad about, and you can't blame them because every school had closed, including Edmond Public Schools, which means people who are commuters probably have kids. Right. And now we have kids coming to the college. Right. And that's what everybody wants to have. Children right. on college property. Right. Exactly. Fun. Fun times. Um, but anyway, um, we, we have apologized for not being there the last two weeks. Um, but we're here tonight. And there is something that I wanted to bring up. Um, something that I've been thinking about um within the last, like, I'd say, week or so. Um, and I've posted it everywhere. If you're anywhere online on any of the Facebook um, pagan sites, I've been posting this everywhere. So um, if you haven't seen it, um, and plus I've been getting a lot of um, interesting feedback on it. Um, but anyway, here's what it says. Um, something I've been thinking about recently I'm starting to wonder about the whole doing magic, and doing magic is in the air quotes, to affect an outcome thing. I mean, what if you're doing magic to affect an outcome, regardless of how good and positive an outcome you want to see manifest in your life, and you miss the lesson you're supposed to have learned by circumventing it with magic? But the lesson still has to be learned, and so it comes back around in a different form. But because you recognize it as something you'd rather not have to go through, lessons are not generally pleasant things to go through, you end up doing magic again and sidestepping the lesson once again. But lessons are there for a reason, and we all have lessons we must learn this time around, or else it's waiting for us when we go down the rainbow slide again and are reincarnated. So that lesson, being the determined little bugger that it is, comes around again, only in a different form. And if we decide not to go through the quote-unquote hard stuff and sidestep it once again through magic, it's like we're stuck on an endless loop until we finally, finally, decide to stop sidestepping the quote-unquote difficult parts of life with magic and finally, finally, decide to learn whatever lesson it is we're supposed to be learning this time around. How long does that take? I have no idea. But I'm starting to wonder if even with the best intent and us trying to manifest the good and positive things we want from this lifetime, we're actually working against ourselves by doing our best to have this cup, quote unquote, pass from us. Hard stuff and problems and difficulties are simply a part of the human experience. So by doing magic to try and avoid the hard stuff or make the hard stuff go by quicker so we can get to the quote-unquote good stuff, I wonder if we're missing the larger point of actually learning the big lessons the hardships in our lives are trying to teach us. And I posted, what do you think? And I've been getting a lot of interesting um, feedback uh, concerning that. Um, I want to turn it... Oh, Joe is researching something right now. So um, I will give you some of the feedback that I've gotten. One of the things that I've received time and again is, well, what if magic is the lesson that you're supposed to be learning? What if self-sufficiency is the thing that you're supposed to be learning? What if calling upon all the resources that you have is what you're supposed to be learning? Um, and by you doing nothing, um, what if you are in fact repeating cycles because you're not doing everything that is necessary um, and utilizing all the resources that you have 
um, at your disposal in order to um, create the life that you want for yourself. Um, another person, a good friend of mine, um, actually posted as well. Um, he sees magic like going into a dark room. Um, if you use magic, you're flipping on a light switch so that you can see what's around you. If you don't use magic and you walk into a dark room, then you run the very real risk of stubbing your toe, tripping over furniture, stepping on the cat's tail, etc., etc. Um, so that's what he said. Um, and then I had another good friend who said, you know what, that's why I don't generally use magic um, unless it's in the um, kitchen. Um, he's, he happens to be a kitchen witch and a, a fantastic fantastic kitchen witch at, at that but um I, and, and let me just state this for the record my problems what i am going through in life are not extraordinary it's not like um I, it, it's not like you can take my life and compare it to, quote-unquote, someone who has had it really, really rough. Um, it, so it's not like... Uh, my life is the um, a human experience. Um, ups and downs, the ins and outs, the highs and lows of life is what I'm um, experiencing right now. And, and this past week has actually been kind of a low, kind of a week for me. And I just wondered, well, I, I, the, the first thing that came to mind is, well, I should just do some magic and um, create a circumstance and a scenario for myself wherein I can immediately get through this and get to the quote-unquote good stuff. But then I thought, well, what if I'm supposed to be learning a lesson in all of this? And so that's what started, you know, the the squeaky wheels in my head to turning and why there's smoke rising out of my ears even as we speak, not because I'm angry, but because I'm using gray matter to actually solve one of life's biggest conundrums. So um, that's what I have been going through this week. Um, and I'm interested to hear what my co-host has to say about this particular question. And I'm also interested in hearing what you guys have to say about this particular um, question. Um, so I encourage you um, to, by all means, comment down below. Um, tell us why you use magic. Um, if, if learning lessons um, and using magic, how do you use magic? And how does it manifest itself in your life? And if you use magic um, in your day-to-day -day life, does it um, does it get you progressing further in life, or does can you make the correlation between using magic and being on an endless loop of sidestepping problems, of getting through problems quicker, um, of you, you know barreling through problems um, just to have um, that momentary uh, release? and to have the lesson waiting for you on the other side, like an endless loop. So um, I'm interested to hear what um, you have to say about that. By all means, comment um, in the comments below, and we certainly do read all the comments that we get. So um, let me turn it over to my partner in crime, Joe, and um, hear what she has to say. Two things I'm going to ask you, and I want your honest opinion. When you do a guided meditation, do you consider it magic? Okay, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I do um, guided meditations um, every other week. Um, every other Wednesday night, I'm doing guided meditations. And to answer your, um, it's a class that I teach um, here in Oklahoma City. It's free of charge. Um, a love donation is accepted afterwards. Um, it's every other Wednesday night from 7 to 8. Um, our next class is on December 3rd. If you want to come, shameless plug. Um, 
to answer your question, do I consider guided meditations magic? No. And the reason why I don't consider guided meditations magic is because, and this might sound a little bit, um, my religion is better than yours, um, or my God can beat up your God kind of a thing. But I don't believe that you have to have any kind of spiritual connection um, to benefit from guided meditation. Um, you can be any religion underneath the sun um, to do guided meditation, um, but to do magic, my and and again, you, you you can blow me up in the comments, but again, uh, it's a situation of my God is stronger than your God, and my God can beat up your God kind of a thing. I believe that if you're actually doing magic and doing it right, then you're probably, odds are, you're probably a pagan, a heathen, a witch, um, following some sort of earth magic, following some sort of earth philosophy, however that um, philosophy manifests itself in your life. And so when I think of magic, I actually think of not necessarily high magic, um, because most of the magic that I do is low magic. I just don't have the time, patience, and energy for high magic. But regardless of whether it's high or low magic, um, I do think that you have to know what you're doing um, in order to not only reap the benefits of good magic, but not to get yourself in trouble. So that's my answer to that. Now, I kind of wanted to bring something up. I was actually going to pull something out of the Reiki. And um, the one thing that does that Reiki does is connects everything. Um, I have been studying Reiki underneath Harlan Bell, who does uh, training every so often. And um, he has, one of the few things that has reached out to me is that healing knows no religion. It knows no creed. It knows no color. And it doesn't really matter. Healing happens. Right. And I see that healing or prayer or supplication or even coming from an old Christian perspective. Um, come on, girl. Um, sorry, we sometimes talk, I talk to my computer. That's a little form for me is a little form of magic. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, people see technology as magic anyway. Anyway, I knew it, right? Right. But point B is whenever we use something, around us. We use those elements around us to sense things. We use it to find things. We use it to call for things. When I lose my keys, I even call my keys. Hey keys, where are you? They haven't answered recently, so I think they're probably no longer here. But... I think they are. They just are hiding. It's the fairies! It's the imps. Anyway, imps. Uh, like they have... Um, I believe magic happens. You don't necessarily have to force it. You don't have to ask it. You don't have to will it. It's just there. It's a presence. It's the elements. It's what's around us. We breathe it. We inhale it. If you're a Christian, you pray for it. Pray for healing. Pray for, pray for the feeling of God next to you. What is prayer but magic? Magic is just science that hasn't been discovered. discovered. Right. But one of the few things is, um, it says in this book called Druid Magic. And, uh, and who wrote Druid Magic? Druid Magic was written by Maria Maggie Sultan, Ph.D. and Nicholas R. Mann. Okay. Um, and basically what it's doing is it tells you to go and um, find a rock in nature. Just go talk to nature. Um, one time a week, um, and I had the page marked, where'd it go? Isn't that lovely? I'm human after all. Basically, druid magic on a separate piece of paper, do the, what you associate with magic. So what, what he's asking you down below is to write what you think of magic. When there's a right brain way of organizing, it's called mind mapping. This technique allows you to brainstorm and call the creative right hemisphere 
Before you, your brain of analyzing, critiquing the left hemisphere, take a blank piece of paper and in the center of it, print in block letters the word magic. And in a closed rectangle, write around it. And write down all the words and images that you associate with magic by drawing a line out of the, from the rectangle in a short way and running around the word of each line of each line uh, and on a separate piece of paper do the same for druid magic or whatever magic you may use you know okay. be it, um, earth magic or in the case of this when your ideas are written your left brain can take over and organize what you've wrote using color codes or different kinds of words and borders now this in itself is using words um, it is a form of magic but when we look at underneath things, like say for example we forget a word, and that word comes to us because we ask for it. You know, okay, what was that word I forgot? Or I was thinking something, can I get that memory back? Is that not also magic? Um, Even in the slightest tinge. Well, I mean, in, in, in that case, yes. And I, 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 quite honestly, when when I think of magic, I think of, of 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 being in ritual space, being in circle, calling the four corners, calling my um, my uh, personal gods and goddesses, um, you know, um, and actually creating um, sacred space. Sacred space, and not only creating sacred space, but actually doing something within sacred space, like an activity of some sort um, that um, that give that eventually will give manifest to what I want. And so, in my mind, that's when when people say, "Oh, can you do magic?" Yes, I can, um, but but. I know, I, but I get the other side of that equation, too. Yeah, that's why I'm playing a little bit of devil's advocate. And forgive me for that uh, 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 underhanding. No, it's fine. But the one thing that I've seen, and with my own personal life, with things that have happened to me, I think magic has always been there. Because considering how, through what I've been through, with a person that does not have some magic around them, or even a protection, around them or healing around them through what I've gone through and to still remain somewhat as level headed as I am, you know, most people in, that have been through everything I've been through would probably be at a nut height. Sorry for those who are mentally ill, but they would probably not be as well maintained. Right. And so with all that being said, I believe magic is just something there either through prayer, through supplication, through requesting goddess, I need to even through the wisdom, the wisdom to see the the need to learn this lesson, Goddess, give me the wisdom and give me the strength to go through this and not come out too scared. Right, and I get that. And my point was, wow. my point was, it, your hands hot. I know. Um, <laughs> My my point in, in all of this was not necessarily that I don't believe that magic is all around us at all times, because actually I do. Um, you, you know, I, when I can look back at my life and the things that have happened to me and say, okay, if this hadn't happened, then I couldn't have gone here. And, you know, my life has taken a trajectory that while I'm in it, while I was in it, you were like, what the hell? But when you look back um, through the wisdom of years, you're like, okay, this is why I had to go through this. This is why I had to go through that. This is why I had to go through the other thing so I could arrive here at this moment in time. And so um, it, when, even when you speak of protection and when you speak of um, um, a healing bubble, by the way, um, Jo is holding her hand in a bubble position. Um, I'm, both, I'm, I'm heating up. I'm actually very warm right now. Yeah, um, she's holding her hands um, in a bu bubble position. Um, it's basically cupping your hands and putting one 
right on top of the other. Um, and if you do it and you leave it there, um, you can actually feel energy um, passing, through both hands. passing through both hands and you can actually create a bubble. And actually, um, just as a side note, um, I wasn't looking at her, but I caught her hands in my peripheral vision and I saw a bubble. So anyway, so that's <laughs> proof. That, I, I mean, and, and, and that within itself is proof that magic happens. I, you know, I didn't call corners. I didn't. We, we didn't call gods and goddesses before we started this evening. It just happens, and so I get that. My my point was not necessarily knowing that magic is all around you and knowing that you can tap into it at any time. My point was, when do you actually tap into it consciously? And when do you allow things to ride? You know? Exactly. Well, that's a, that's a good point. That's a, that's a differentiation from what it seemed like this statement that the person... Because I know that the email that you were reading was... Was, was that someone else's? The... No, that was mine. Oh, I, wow. actu I actually wrote that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but with that being said... It's the more of the, you have to, sometimes you have to let things happen. And Reiki, we've even learned that heal if you can, but sometimes even death is the answer. Um, or that people, there's illnesses that you just, you send healing and yeah, it might alleviate some, some, some case. Like say, for example, where I have PCOS, by healing, it might help alleviate some back pain, or if someone sends me healing, it might help when I'm having a cyst rupture, which is very painful. That might also help me with um, not with being able to, like if I'm in school, because I can't just up and go and just let it go. And I can just sit there and focus on what I need to and not be able to worry about pain because I'm not feeling it. Right. Um, and that to me is just as magic and more important magic to me than the big things because the big things happen. We know they're going to happen and we need to reserve the big stuff for that. But the minor stuff helps us get ready for the big stuff. Right. And, and, and the other thing about that is when you say the big, the, the minor stuff helps us prepare for the big stuff sometimes. And I know that, for me, I get lost in my own head um, and I get lost in my own problems. And yes, I realize that I am not someone, um, you know, who has the Ebola virus. I'm not someone who is under threat from ISIS. I'm not someone who lives in um, a war-torn country. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not even a. I'm, I'm not a woman who lives in the Middle East. You know, I, I'm not a lot of things. And so when you compare my quote unquote suffering to the quote unquote suffering of other people. Um you can maybe uh, Buddha broccoli. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Um, when you compare my um, my suffering to the suffering of other people, which by the way you really shouldn't do because of course suffering is relative. But when you compare my suffering to the suffering of someone else, uh, the the y you know the scales are kind of tipped not in my favor because you know for all intents and purposes when, when i look back over my life i can see that i have had a bubble of protection around me i can see how angels have swooped in um at the last minute and saved my sorry ass i have seen in my life, how miracles have happened. Um, and so sometimes, though, knowing all that, um, I still get lost in my own head. And I think all oh, the troubles that I'm going through are... I, I, I are the big stuff, rather than saying, oh, that's just small, that's just... Um, rudimentary it's not it, it's not going to last that very long you know get over yourself etc cetera, etc cetera. but sometimes i get lost in um the trees i get lost in the weeds mm -hmm. and so um 
I wonder, and then I immediately go to, okay, well, then I just need to do magic in order to, um, make it better. to make it better. Right. And, and again, you, you know, after posing this question, a lot of people told me, well, magic is a resource. So, and, and it's a God and goddess given resource. So why not? use magic, especially if you know how to use it in the right way. Um, and, and I strongly, strongly urge people to use magic in the right way. Um, learn all you can before you do it. Um, but it's also the reason why I'm loath to do a lot of magic. You know, I, I, I have friends um, who get into sacred space every day. You know, they have a 20 minute ritual that they do every day. And it's getting into sacred space, it's calling the corners, it's calling their gods and goddesses, and you know, whatever. Doing a whole ritual for the whole day. Right, doing their ritual for the day. Now, I meditate in the morning. And Me I try too. to meditate in the evening if I can, because usually I get tired and but I do some self-healing via Reiki. By the time that happens, I'm usually, as soon as level one, level two step Reiki means I'm out. Right. But the thing is, it's that's also doing magic. It's might not be creating a huge sacred space, but you're creating a space within yourself. Because you don't have to call the god and goddess when... At the same time as we are connected to them, they are connected to us and ourselves. We are a god and goddess. True. So we are calling our own sacred space. And therefore, oh my gosh, there comes the accent. Uh, and therefore, by that, we find our sacred space within us. Well, and, and that's true. Um, finding sacred space within yourself. And actually, there is a school of thought out there that says you should be able to to tap into that energy um, at any time you know whether you're walking down the street driving in your car in class at work you know sitting in front of your computer you should be able to tap into that energy instantaneously and manifest what it is that you want um, in your life there is a school of thought that that says that um it also says that that takes a lot of practice and a lot of training and a lot of like my friend does you know get into sacred space consciously each and every day you know and so but at the same time um and, and, and let me finish this point. I, real, I know. I'm, th I'm thinking my mind out here. Right. But, but, but at the same time, real quickly, I wonder also if are we using, if we are, like, like for instance, okay, say um, I stub my toe, right? Okay. There's words that come off of that. So okay. Too, I tell you. Stub, stubbing your toe. I, I stub my toe. I call upon magic. I call upon healing energy, Reiki, and boom, the pain is gone. But my question is, if we are constantly, constantly in that frame of mind, wherein wherein we're strong enough and powerful enough and know enough, I can't stress that enough, do your friggin' homework, know what you're friggin' doing before you get into this kind of thing. But if we're constantly in that space of getting through the hard stuff quickly and um, getting to the good stuff and moving on with our lives, if we're missing something, you know, out of life, um, if we're missing, and, 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 and please, again, I get it. Um, hardships and problems are part of the human experience. But if we're getting through them rather quickly and not learning lessons, I wonder, A, if we're stuck in an endless loop, and B, if we are, um, in fact, um, using magic as a crutch, as a catch-all. I think a lot of people use magic in the case of a band-aid or an immediate neosporin. Right. Whereas, you know, you might stub your toe, but the difference of what Reiki 
and using immediate magic is, is the Reiki, you constantly stay grounded. And we can both agree that it's good to stay grounded at all times if you can. Right. Uh, and you just ground it out. There's a difference between grounding out the pain and sending it up to the divine to be transferred into positive energy to come back out to the, go back out into the universe. Right. Then creating magic to say, boom, I, I, I heal myself and, you know, like, it's you. Right. It's Bibbidi bobbidi boo. My favorite. You know, uh, my favorite spell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lightning bolt. But, you know, it's different with doing that than saying, okay, I am going to heal my toe and not send it back out. Because the difference is you're taking the negative, you're pulling it up, you're bringing it back down, and you're giving it back to the earth. Right. Because that's the difference between magic and using the elements. The difference between both. So and one can be done constantly and should be done constantly. So you so then what you're saying is and, and I know just enough about Reiki to get myself in trouble. And so that's why I um I I refer to the expert in the room. Um so you're saying that you're in a constant state of recycling. Yes. Um computer wise. We become more of a transistor. Okay. I'm okay, a trans uh, transistor or a um, a battery. Okay. And like a car, a transistor sends the power right through. It does not hold the power for itself. So it's it like a holds, vessel. It holds what it needs to survive and to improve itself so it can send more. But then what it does is it becomes like a vessel. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And I'm um, actually when I do fairs and stuff like that, um, and I or, or when I'm actually reading for people um, in my private practice, um, I make sure to be that vessel, you know, um, where I get out of the way and I'm like a big tube that that information comes through and comes out of and and. Um, delivers whatever message that needs to be delivered to um, the client that comes to see me. Exactly. And some of the biggest things I've realized from doing my own readings and then starting Reiki is a lot of times when we read, we forget to shut off, turn off the third eye um, or to bring it back in. Because a lot of times we open up that wide third eye to do the reading, to send it in, to bring it out and to look into the past, look into the present, look into the future. But we don't always reconnect it. And we don't always rebalance. Right. And rebalancing that can not rebalancing it. A lot of people, if you, if you have you ever had a headache when you left uh, opera, a little bit. I know because I make sure to ground. ground. Yeah. Exactly, but I bet you there's a couple of us who leave with headaches. Probably. By the way, opera is a uh, it, it is a metaphysical oh. psychic um, paranormal psychic education research association. Right. So for those of you who don't know, that's what opera stands for. And it's very good to bring into uh, to what you do and through what I do, we can combine that into the aspect of understanding the cycle because we cycle. It's it's the wheel of fortune. Right. And, um, and, and, I, and I'm not going to belabor this point too much longer um, because we're almost um, 40 minutes into this already. I'm going to talk about these um, right, but I I really I really want to hear your thoughts about this. Um, I really want to hear what you guys think about uh, about learning lessons versus getting versus using magic to get through the hard stuff. Using magic um, as a band aid. Using magic as a catch all when um, possibly <coughs> um, we should be using magic. Um, there's also a school of thought out there, and um, I will, and, and I'll leave it at this: is that when you use magic all the time, excuse me, okay, there's two schools of thought out there, and they're actually separate from each other. One says, if you use magic all the time, it's like training a muscle. The more you use it, the better you get at it and the stronger you become. Um, and then there's another school of thought that says, if you use magic too much and you talk about it too much, you dilute it. And so 
and and so the um the oh the um oh Stephen, come on think it's right on the tip of your tongue so if you use magic all the time then you're in that you then you end up diluting the power devalue it. you devalue it and it then then it loses its power so you've got two different trained areas of thought there why can't we from both of those come up with a third train of thought because in order to use psychic ability, you must continually work your mind. It is a mental process. It is something you must do. Right. And if you don't do it, you eventually lose it. Well, you, sometimes. Well, it becomes a little more stagnant. Right. It's harder to to tap into it. But yeah. if you overdo it, you become completely frazzled in the, the head and the third eye. Right. Well, why not combine it to do an everyday practice? Just because you use something every day doesn't mean you lose it. Now, when I was training for, when I'm training for Reiki, it's something that I do every day to do self-healing and then do it, send out healing. And one of the few things is if I do it too much, right as a learner, yes, I will wear myself out. But the difference between when I do readings, if I do it constantly and constantly and constantly and constantly, you get back-to-back -back readings, I get exhausted. I don't know right. about you. Right. But I become tapped. And but if I do a couple readings every day, I become stronger to do a couple more the next day or the couple more the next week. Right. And by that, as long as I'm not overdoing the gift I'm given. But if I'm not using it enough, then I'm wasting the gift I'm given. Right. So combining the two, expressing how what you can do. But explaining that you can only do so much. Right. And with that, allowing allowing the lessons to, to, be, learned. to be learned regardless. Because um, my, uh, my initial knee-jerk reaction um, in the last 24 hours um, with this has been, if you're unsure about magic, don't do it. That's always a good rule of thumb. If you're unsure about magic, don't do it. Uh, magic should only be done if you're absolutely sure that it is needed and necessary for whatever purpose that um, you're using it for. Um, and also um, that, I, and I like the idea of having a daily practice of magic, whatever that entails for you like I, like I was talking about my friend who um, you, you know has his daily you, you know calling the corners calling the god and goddess doing his activity within the circle and then letting it go all within 20 minutes or you know like we do in the morning meditating or something having a daily practice um, I encourage and we're moving on from this now um, I encourage you um, to leave your comments about this very interesting question um, that I I have brought up. Um, leave your comments in down below and let's continue this discussion um, outside of this episode of Bibs. And those who also would like to know the book that I've been studying through Reiki is The Essential Reiki, A Complete Guide to Ancient Healing Art by Diane Stein. She is a practicing Wiccan and an amazing woman. Right. My goddess is she amazing. Yes. Um, and also a really cool book um, is uh, the sayings of Buddha. It is a journal. You can pick it up at a ha either half price books or you know Barnes and Noble. Um, it has different Buddha sayings, and a lot of these things help for every religion. Because one of the few things that he says is holding on to anger is like holding on to a molten stone and expecting it to burn somebody else. Hmm. How often can we use that in paganism? Hmm. And since we're talking about <laughs> books and we're talking about half price Are books. You still writing this is a great segue. Are you ready? Half price books, and and no, I'm not getting paid by half price books. But if uh, they want to, they can. But if they want to, um, sponsor bibs in the buckle, they most certainly can. Um, um, half price books is opening up um, at 7 a.m. on Black Friday, and um, you can. Mm -hmm. Go in and actually register to win a hundred dollar gift card at Half Price Books. Which, if you play your cards right at Half Price Books, a hundred dollars is a lot of friggin' bucks. So that's something 
to be thankful for. Because they're going to totally win it. <laughs> and if you're not there, you don't have a chance. So stay away and go home. A little more. <laughs> Stephen and I are going out. Well, I don't know that I'm going to be up at 7 a.m. I'm, I'm kidding. Well, I'm just saying. 7 a.m. is way too early. And I've already done all my Christmas shop. Well, I still have a few more friends to shop for. But I've done my Christmas shopping thanks to Amazon.com. I want a grease step Matthew McConaughey for for Christmas. You say you want Cards Against Humanity? <laughs> I thought you already have that box. I don't have the big black box, no. I don't. I, 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 Can you I, say that five times fast? I don't have the big black box. The big black box. The big black box. <laughs> <the, I>, no. <laughs> <laughs> and here starts the festivities. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I know I don't have uh, all I have is the first set. I don't have any of the expansions. I ordered the ten days of Kwanzaa or something, <laughs> and I'm gonna have some really big fun with that because Cards Against Humanity every year for Christmas does something really cool. Because this year Santa Claus is dead. Sorry, John. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> but with that being said, um, 10 Days of Kwanzaa or something else is Fun. pretty epic. Fun. Yeah. All right. So um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? I am thankful for, for a greased up Matthew McConaughey. Let me just say this. I am thankful for a greased up Matthew McConaughey circa 2006. And the reason why I say that is Matthew McConaughey, congratulations on your Oscar for Dallas Buyers Club. You deserved the hell out of that Oscar win. That was an amazing <laughs> performance and an amazing film. But you haven't <laughs> recovered yet from it. There, and I mean, because quite frankly, the man had to... I, 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 do you know the story about I Dallas Buyers Club? Uh, he he was an AIDS patient. He mm -hmm. he um, portrayed an AIDS patient um, um, at the very beginning of the epidemic um, in the early '80s, and it and, and that's just touching the surface. But basically, oh, Matthew McConaughey had to be skin and bones for this entire movie, and I mean. When you look at him, He's the he was, I mean, he, he was a ghost of a man through this, throughout oh, the yes. entire movie. If you have not seen Dallas Buyers Club, do yourself a favor and red box the shit out of it because it is an amazing movie. Jared Leto won Best Supporting Actor. He deserved it as well. But Jared Leto has bounced back. But Matthew McConaughey... Even though he's gotten, he's put the weight back on. I, I tell you, losing weight like that, it, 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 there is something that is different about him now. He's he, he's back to fighting weight now, but there is something when you look at him that is different now. And I don't know what it is, but he's not as hot as he used to be. So I will say. I am thankful for a greased up Matthew McConaughey circa 2006. That sounds good to me. Yes. Well, I am thankful for world peace. No, I'm kidding. Wrong. Sorry. That's um, a miscongeniality. Um, no, I really am thankful for having a year where I'm going to graduate. And that year would be? Next year. Graduating this week, though. Yay! With a bachelor's in how do I flip burgers? <laughs> uh, general studies, but I also found out that it's not as bad as it seems. People make general studies to seem like, oh, you can't do anything. Well, that's because people don't try. With the people who look at their general studies degree and if they've actually applied themselves, two words, applied themselves, right? They'll be really good. You know, you've got a person who's got business experience, oh. computer experience. Music experience, mm. that kind of rounded background is really good in business or politics. And it's a great jump start to for going, uh, into, masters. For going into your master's, which I know that you are going to be doing. Yes. So. And I've, I've looked and talked to people about it, and it looks like I'm going to be doing the forensics, uh, forensic psychology. Nice. With a uh, doppelganger into uh, psychology, psychology, counseling psychology, because it's easier to go the forensic psychology and then go for the counseling versus vice versa. Right. 
Well, I'm also thankful for, um, I have to say this, I am thankful for an amazing network of friends. Um, here, here. I, 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 I tell you, um, I don't keep in constant contact with my family. My mother and father are probably the only two people that I keep in constant contact with. But I consider my friends my family. And I have been so blessed and so thankful um, and so, so I guess really blessed is really the word, um, to have um, expanded my quote unquote priestly duties um, to include um, the Labyrinth Temple here in town. Um, we do eight Sabbaths a year. Um, I've been doing guided meditations now um, since at least, um, I want to say March or April. I started guided meditation classes um, and teaching those. Um, and um, I'm thankful for Bibs, you know, which we've just started this. I see big what? things yeah. happening for this. I'm so thankful for this. You know, I'm thankful for you, Joe. I'm thankful for you, Stephen. And I'm thankful to Chris. And I'm thankful for you, Chris. And I'm thankful for you, too. Thank you, Chris. Playing World of Warcraft Chris is there. the unpaid intern. <laughs> Are we all the unpaid interns? No, just Chris. Okay. <laughs> so Chris, get into my office. I will talk to you later. Um, you can call me Bill. And I'm... <laughs> um, I'm thankful for... I'm, I'm thankful for Coretus. I'm, I'm really thankful for Coretus. Um, a men's group has been something that I've... Yeah been wanting to see happen for a very long time and that it is happening I am excited and and stoked about and that we actually have people that come and support the men's group the men's spirituality group here and I am by default leader of that group even though uh, you know what duties? right priestly duties exactly um, so it's been an amazingly spiritual year for me. Um, uh, lots of doors have opened up for me spiritually. And for that, um, I am very thankful. I'm uh, thankful for you, Stephen and Chris and my in-laws. I really love them. They're awesome people. I'm sitting here with a beer bottle saying this. So here, hold my beer and watch this. Um, no, but I'm also very thankful for... Um, Karina and Harlan, they've become sort of like parents to me when my, sometimes my own parents don't seem to understand everything. But yeah. I will also say I'm very thankful for my stepmother. She's she's stepping up and it's scaring Chris and I because we don't know what's going down. But she's actually being kind of a mom for a change. And I don't know if she's trying to save my immortal soul or what, but you know, hey, I'm going to smile and nod and see what happens. Maybe there's healing going on there. I'll take it. Um, the other thing is I'm very thankful for, um, I guess the fact that it's almost time for school to be over for the, <laughs> for winter break. Um, Woo! and, uh, I, I guess I'm just thankful for life itself. I, 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 you know, there's not much to say outside of that. I'm thankful to be living. So what are you doing and let me actually get closer to the mic here. What are you What are you doing for Thanksgiving Day? What are Thanksgiving you doing? Thanksgiving Day, we are going to my in-laws, and we are going to grub it up. You're going to, oh, grub it up. Okay. Grub it up. Okay. Yeah. We have two turkeys to inhale, pie, pie, pie. So there's two pie. So by trigonometry standards, that's actually one one rotation. So we've only got one pie because two pie is equivalent to the whole set four sectors. Yes. My head hurts. <laughs> yes. Mm. Um, no, but uh it's great. Um so we're gonna have two pies. There's gonna be potatoes, 
we're going to have the roast beast. And we're going to see the... A turducken? Turducken? No, no turducken. Yeah. Uh, I feel sorry for the turkey for that way. I already feel bad for the turkey. The turkey's having to eat, be eaten. This, I'm thankful for the turkey. I'm thankful for the turkey giving its life so that we might have turkey dinner on Thanksgiving. I'm also thankful that it didn't get named as the country bird. Because <laughs> otherwise it would have been... The, the eagle became the country bird over the uh, turkey. Benjamin Franklin wanted to be the turkey because the turkey was a lot more useful than the eagle. But you know, I'm glad it's the, not the turkey so we can eat it. Right. So I feel bad about eating an eagle. Love to eat turkey and, and some, some potato. Boil them, mash them, put them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, put them in a stew. Okay. This is something that I must have now. It is the pump. Okay. It's spelled P U M P E C A. P P L E pie cake, and it is the turducken or turducken of desserts. And um, let me see if I can't bring this up. Can you see it? How does this spell again? P U M P E C A P P L E pie cake. Um, and <coughs> let me see if I can't. Um, bring this up. I'm sorry, everybody. When we were talking pump about pumpkin cake, pumpkin apple, pump apple, pump pump apple pie cake um, is the church apple. Pump apple. Um, pump the chapel uh, near the river. Pump 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 a Pump a capel pie cake. Pump a capel. Say it, 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 it's a tongue twister, damn it. Pump, yeah, pump, pump a capo a pie cake is the turdurkin of desserts. And uh, I, I wish I could bring up. Uh, There's a video here I found. Uh, yeah, there is a video, but I'm trying to. I, I'm trying to. Three pies baked into a cake. Three pies baked into a cake. Stacked and iced. Yum, cake. <laughs> Exactly. It's three pies baked into three different cakes. So, and I forget what, what the pies are, but I... Pumpkin, I'm, pecan, and apple. It's so simple. Pumpkin pie... Pumpkin, <coughs> pineapple... Pecan, and apple. Pumpkin, pecan, and apple... Pump peck apple. Pump peck apple. Pump peck um, apple. Um, um, apple. Baked into a... And baked into... I want to say... Baked into a cake. Baked into a delicious cake, um, and I want that in my life. I don't know how I'm going to get that in my life, but I want that in my life. It's stacked uh, and iced. <laughs> she would agree. Stop, Matthew McConaughey to serve it to. You. Circa 2006. <laughs> so we're going to have to hire the TARDIS. Okay. Right. See, now that's a double double thing because then David Tennant would be there. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, honey. That's all right. Well, I'll but if it's, if it's 2006, you will have yet to meet your husband. So it's good. Yeah, this is true. There you go. And I can uh, steal him away from Becky at the time, right? We have yet to meet Chris, the unpaid intern, in, in 2006. So, therefore, whatever we do in 2006 yeah, would not affect Stay what we do in 14. <laughs> exactly. So, unless, of course, you know, the butterfly effect, whatever that Squish is. Squish a butterfly in the past caused, you know, the apocalypse in the future. Right. So anyway, um, what am I going to be doing this Thanksgiving? Thanks for asking. What are, um, what are you? I was actually going. To, I was asking you at the same time you were asking me. Um, what am I, I doing this Thanksgiving? Pies. I was thinking you were three pies baked into a cake. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, yeah, served up by the grease up Matthew McConaughey. So what are you doing for this Thanksgiving? I am spending it with my parents. Um, it's interesting. My family has. Um, has separated and fissured out and you know gone their separate ways and so um 
my mom and dad usually, it, it's usually for that day, it's usually just my mom, dad, and me. Aww. But that's okay because, you know, the best part of Thanksgiving and the best part of Christmas, and at least in my household, is actually getting in the kitchen and cooking with my mom. Aww. You know, um, a few years back, um, a couple of years back, I had it in my mind that I was that I was leaving uh, Oklahoma, and I wanted my parents to leave me some sort of legacy that I could pass on to my non-existent children or whatever. And um, I spent a long time trying to figure out what I could actually pass on to my 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 non-existent children and then i realized hang on just a sec um my battery is critically low okay and so it's about nine percent so mine is at nine percent too <laughs> um i'm sorry we're we're, we're kind of all Bowing over the it. place yeah anyway um and, and so I, I spent a long time trying to figure out, well, what, what is my parents' long, um, lasting, enduring legacy to me? And I thought I had it um, up until, and, and then it didn't work out. And then um, me moving didn't work out. And then I realized that my mother's lasting legacy to me um, was her love of cooking, her love of getting in the kitchen and um, making large meals for the family. And so the, my favorite part of Thanksgiving, and it's prob probably something that uh, when I sit down and think about it and reflect on it, you know, years and years from now, um, and even today, it's my favorite part of the uh, hustle and bustle, if you will, of Thanksgiving. of Thanksgiving is actually getting in the kitchen with my mom and cooking up a storm. I just absolutely love that time with my mom, and I treasure it. And there's there's nothing that there, there's nothing quite like it in the world for me. And so I'm thankful for that. And um, so that's what I'll be doing Thanksgiving Day is actually eating what we've created. Um, Saturday, um, I have um, two of my best friends are having their Thanksgiving on Saturday, so I'm going to their house on Saturday, oh, nice. um, which is fun. And then Sunday, um, do you know Margaret Jeffers? Yes. Margaret um, is She's having doing a, uh, a, a, potluck. a potluck, and so I'll be doing that on I Sunday. I was also invited. I, we might go to that, and I put it as a definite maybe. Yeah, so um, this Thanksgiving is actually going to be chocked full of holiday cheer. It's going to be chocked full of family, both um, connected via DNA and chosen family, and so it's going to be a good year. Uh, or, or a good Thanksgiving. I am going to be making my uh, pumpkin spice bread. Pump, pump pumpkin spice bread. Pump cap cap I'm not making that. <laughs> I want that. Get in my belly. <laughs> Get in my belly. Get in my belly. Uh, oh, it's all the way back. Oh, I got my baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back. Okay. <laughs> I'm not for being a fat bastard. Bastard. Get in my belly. Get in my belly. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think it's going to be really... Oh, there comes the pressure slide. What can I say? It just kind of happens. So you're going to be making a pumpkin spice... Uh, bread for Friday. We are doing a kind of game night with the uh, other side of the family. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't really realize that I, I actually put booze in my pumpkin spice bread. Nice. So it's going to be spice. <laughs> nice. I like the booze, and it makes me happy to see everybody else get drunk and then not know what's going on. Alcohol makes everything better. That's everything. Just, <laughs> just absolutely amusing for a while when people don't know what's happening. So, right. With that being said, I want to see what everybody else is thankful for. I mean, I'm also I want to also give a thanks out to our military boys and girls and absolutely. You know, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to sit here talking about paganism. Right. You know, we'd be shot for it or even right. worse. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So by all means, I guess comment down below um, what you're thankful for um, and what you're 
what, what your Thanksgiving plans are. Um, by all means, comment down below. We would love to read what you have to say about Thanksgiving. Also, are you going shopping on Friday? Me, Are you going to no. get out in the Black Friday? Or are you no. going to get you? I would suggest if you guys absolutely positively need to, go to claw-writings.com and go to my Amazon.com link and follow it right to Amazon.com and get everything on two-day shipping. Have a blessed day, and thank you for choosing Amazon.com. And you can do it on Black Monday. Or Cyber Monday. Or Cyber or, Monday. Yeah, or whatever. Or you can do it on What the Fuck Wednesday. <laughs> what the Fuck Wednesday, Which yes. Which is the day before Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> so, what the fuck? Why not do it a couple days early? <laughs> Why not? Um, but definitely comment down below um, what your what your plans are for um, Thanksgiving, what you're thankful for um, for this um, time of year. If you're going to be, if you're going to dive in head first into the craziness of uh, Black Friday, or if you've already gotten your shopping done. We'd love to hear from, um, I, like I said, Black, uh, um, a greased up Matthew McConaughey circa 2006 is what I want this Christmas. If you can make that happen for me, that would be great. And I just want the TARDIS. I want right. to be, I want to be the doctor for Christmas just for one day because I can make that day last forever. Right. <laughs> so, right. Which means, yes. Okay. So then what we could do is, and this is what we want while you're out there shopping on Black I'm, Friday or Cyber Monday. What, what, what Joe and I want is the TARDIS. The TARDIS. <laughs> we want the TARDIS. Because then we can go. We can go go and catch your great <laughs> Matthew McConaughey circa 2006. 2006. We can also <laughs> even pick up, uh, you know, what's his, the Joker before he passed away? Heath Ledger, Heath yes. Ledger, yeah. Circa 1999 or something like that. Yes, yes. So, yeah. And tell him, tell him to not go. be so dumb. Right. Change history. Right. Um, and so we want the TARDIS. We want Dave Tennant. We want to grease and up. And Christopher Ma Eccleston. Bring Chris, bring Chris, because he's funny. Okay. Oh, and John. Um, Barrowman. John Barrowman. Yes, we want John Barrowman. We need Captain Jack. And we also need Rose Tyler to come with us, because she's fun, too. Eh, I could do without her, but whatever. Oh, Donna, um, Donna Noble. Donna Noble. Bring Donna Noble. Donna Noble. Okay. Um, and. Then we can go and get Matthew McConaughey. Basically, basically what... The party crowd. Basically what, what Joe and I want for Thanksgiving, other than your continual support of Vibs, is the TARDIS. Um, and you can just drop it off at either of our doors, and we will make sure to swing by and pick up the other person and say, look what I got. Um, we from... promise to, bring, to pick up the other person and not fly away. But we want to make sure that the the time the time vortex is working on the TARDIS. Do not send us a bad TARDIS. Right. <laughs> make sure it's in good working condition. <laughs> Because we do not want to go to the future, which is a uh, John Barrowman big ass head in the middle of space. <laughs> That's all that there Although is. Oh, John Barrowman actually went farther than the future outside of his big ass head. But yeah. let's not bring that up. We will be coming back to you and next week. Yes, we will be back next week, um, hopefully with TARDIS in hand, which will be awesome. We may even be broadcasting from the TARDIS, which will be awesome. Yeah, we'll be broadcasting from the TARDIS <laughs> and the Blue Box. As we're traveling back to 2006 to pick up a, a Grease Up Matthew <laughs> McConaughey. So, Go ahead and leave us the TARDIS and we'll be glad to get back. We'll even take you with us. So with that being said, my name is Steven. And my name is Joe and we want to go ahead and say thank, thank you, you for tuning into Bibs and we'll see you next week. See you next week on Bitches, Bitches in the Buckle.